Good day, everybody. Good day, friends. Good day, family. It's a Monday and happy Monday to you all. Hello, guys. Welcome to At The Well. It's always a privilege sharing with Deacon Mapule. Thank you, Ms. I'm honored to have her right next to me today. I hope you all are keeping safe and warm. Yes, guys. It's been cold, right? Yeah, I know the weather has been bad and it's been freezing. It's so much better yeah. today. We appreciate the sun. We appreciate the sunlight. Yes. And God is great this morning. And yeah, thank you, Craig. We can see you. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. welcome Craig. We appreciate all the support. And who is that? And this is Hello, Cindy. And everybody else that's joining us this afternoon. We are so blessed to have you guys. And what are we talking about today? We are sure today's topic I'm so pumped about. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. It's exciting. We're gonna talk about one of the pillars of the kingdom of God. Yes. We all know from scripture that there is three that the Bible mentions. It is faith, it is hope, and it is love. Yes. But the word of God says love is the greatest among the three. And why is love the greatest? Because everything you know, stems from love, everything yeah. that happens in the kingdom of God. So love basically drives the kingdom yeah. of God. Hallelujah. So that's why the Bible says it is the most, you know, powerful pillar. And we're going to have a look at it today, speak about it, talk about it, and go behind the scenes <laughs> and discuss love this morning. Sure. Because the Bible does say that as children of God, we are led by love and we are expected to live and to live by love. By love. Amen. Isn't that amazing? That's too amazing. That's too powerful. Yes. And we're going to read from the book of First Corinthians and yes. verse number 13. Yes, First Corinthians 13, 13 and verse 1. So verse 1 says that, Though I speak in tongues or languages of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a cleaning symbol. Okay. So God can, can give you the revelation of speaking with tongues and speaking the language of, of angels. angels. Yeah. That's so interesting. He says you can have all those things, yeah. but if you do not have love, you are like a sounding gong. Is that what it says? Yes. A or a cleaning symbol. symbol. There's a sure. saying that says an empty tin makes a lot of noise. <laughs> yes, and true. that's what God is saying. Uh, as you are speaking in tongues, yeah. as you're doing all those things, but if you do not do it motivated by love, the Bible says you're just making noise. A lot of noise. That's all. Sure. In verse number two. Verse number two says, Though I have the gift of prophecy mm. and can phantom all mystery and all knowledge, does it say all? All, all knowledge. Wow. And I have faith that can move mountains, but I do not have love. I am nothing. Oh my gosh. That word nothing. That's actually scary. It's it's very scary thing that we can prophesy, we can pray in tongues for hours, but if we do it outside of love, we are nothing. Nothing means zero, right? Zero. Not reported, doesn't exist. Whether nothing. my faith can move all the Lesotho mountains, the Bible says, and prophesy all the mysteries. Sure. If, if love is not there, God doesn't recognize us. You are nothing. Wow. Nothing. Guys. Okay, verse number Verse three, three say, if I give all possessions to and through I give my body mm. to be burned. Mm. But I, but I am not love. It profits me nothing. It's interesting that you can give all your possessions. It doesn't say just money. Money, yeah. That you, you, you can yeah. give just money. It says, even if I give all my possessions to the poor, poor. Yeah. which is scriptural, God does say that yeah. we need to, you know, give be, to the poor. Yes, yeah. blessed to be a blessing. But if I do it, just so that maybe I get the recognition of people or whatever the motive yeah. is, if it's not love, God says, I profit nothing. You profit nothing. No, no, no harvest. And it's amazing how in two scriptures, the word nothing appears. Yes. The yes. word not. Yes. It's amazing how nothing appears. You are nothing. It's mm. like, I am nothing. You profit nothing. Mm. Mm. So it means it doesn't matter how much you are doing for the kingdom of God. If you're doing it with the wrong intentions or the wrong motives, you profit nothing. 
It's a you reco- you are not the scriptures. So yeah. that tells me that God doesn't see it. Doesn't recognize it. Heaven doesn't recognize it. Because he looks it. through the mirror of love. Sure, sure. Not through the mirror of a human, uh-uh. but through the mirror of love. And the thing, love is such a thing that everyone longs for. Everyone hungers for love. Yes, yes, yes. And it doesn't matter in which way it comes forth to us. As long as someone loves us, we feel that no matter how they treat us, we are loved at least. Exactly. But that is exactly. not what the Word of God says. No, 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 no. That is That's not, not what the Word of God says. The Word of God says in verse 4, that love is patient. Love is kind. Amen. Huh? Love is kind. It doesn't envy. It's not jealous. It's not jealous. It's not jealous. Okay. It's kind. No, okay. It's kind. Okay. It does not boost. Mm. It does not boast. It is not proud. Wow. So, love, in other words, when you're walking in love or you live by love, yeah. you are always humble. Yes. And we all know that humility, we all know that humility is attractive. Yeah. The same applies to love. To love exactly. No one wants to be around someone that is always rude, that is yeah. always grumpy. Or boosting about themselves. Exactly. Or you don't give someone else a, a, a chance to shine because you're the only one taking exactly. all the shine and exactly. stuff like that. Exactly. And it's small things that makes love. Mm-hmm. And it's saying love does not dishonor others. Wow. You do not dishonor others. Sure. That tells me that love <laughs> protects. Love it covers. Yes, yes. It covers. Yes, yes. Mm. It is not self seeking. It's not selfish. It is not easily angered. Okay. It keeps no record of wrongs. Oh, okay. That part for me stood out when, when Peter denied Jesus. Yes. Three times. I remember the story. Yes. Jesus loved Peter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yet Peter denied him three times. But when Jesus came to Peter again, he did not remember the wrong Peter did. Exactly. But exactly. he died. And so so the, there was no record of Peter's wrongdoing. And it's interesting because Jesus did ask Peter, Peter, do you love, love me? me? I think three times he asked times. Peter. Because Jesus knew that if he was not motivated by love, yeah. he was not going to stand the test exactly. that was coming, coming, you know. And sure. also remember, I think it was it Peter that went to Jesus and said, Jesus, how many times must I forgive someone that yeah. wrongs me? And Jesus said, you forgive them 70, 70 times, times seven. you know. And when you do that, there is no room for you to actually keep any the wrongs. Yeah. record of wrongs. And then it says, love does not delight in evil. But rejoices with the truth. Wow. So what they tell me is that when you do wrong, the people that love you will correct you because they love you. And it's coming from the place, place of, of love. Of love. They will not see you go down the wrong path without pulling you or trying to pull you back. That's what love does. That's right? what love does. It's pull you back into a line sure. mm. with what you've been called for. Amen. And then that's so important when we when we look at love. Then but like you said, love always protects. It does. Always trust, mm-hmm. always hopes, amen, and always perseveres. Wow, it love never gives up, up. <laughs> just like God never gave up on men, you know. After yeah. Adam and Eve messed up, we all know the story. Sorry. Yeah, uh, God didn't just say, Oh, they messed up, yeah. and then you know what. But he did something. That's why the Bible for so God loved the world that he actually gave Jesus, his yeah. son, to come and die for us because love does not keep a record of wrongs. Yes. Love always protects. It always perseveres. Sure. And what stands out for me also is verse number eight that says, nah, love never fails. So if I love you, I will not fail you. You know what I mean? I will do my best. I will do whatever it takes yeah. to see you succeed and because we love each other even then even when we do make mistakes yes we don't keep the wrong of the mistake because love never fails exactly so when someone do wrong toward towards you you must forgive that person 70 times seven, seven times, times. Yeah. so that means there's no place for you to hold on to the wrong they have done there won't be any room there won't be room because I doubt that someone can actually <laughs> offend you 70 times 7 a day. And the one thing about love is that love is actually a verb. Okay, okay, okay. That means it's a doing work. So something you have to do. So it's not just that feel good. It's not an emotion. Mm-hmm. It's not just an emotion. It's something that we need to do. 
Like people think when they say I love you, yes, yeah. I love you, but what are we doing for people to show mm. them that we actually love them? Amen. Because we 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 always say love people feel love is an emotion. And that's why so many people are in the wrong set of environments or the exactly. wrong relationships exactly. because they think they are being loved and the way they are treated is okay because that is what love does. That is how the world interprets it's love. love. But yeah. in the kingdom, kingdom of God, hey! it's totally different. <laughs> Amen. It's, it's, so, it's so important. And if we look at the, um, the fruit of the Spirit, yes, it's amazing how um, it says in Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, mm. kindness, goodness, faithfulness, Amen. gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. Isn't it interesting that the first fruit is love, Miss Kennedy? Yeah. <laughs> before one can have self control, before one can have kindness, goodness, etc., you must have love. Because, like we said from the beginning, that everything has its roots. Yeah. From love. from love. So without love, joy becomes an issue. Yes. Without love, peace becomes an issue. It's like when two people are in a relationship, mm. if there's no love, there's no peace. Exactly. If there's no love, there's no long suffering. There is no gentleness. There's no kindness. Because love has to be the one that drives, that drives the relationship. You. Exactly. The exactly. saying that when you go into the presence of God, out of love, because you love God and you know that God loves you. Amen. So when you go into the presence of God and you receive the love that He gave to you, that He's giving to you, you at peace when you're in the presence of God. You're in a contentment because you know that the Father loves me, mm. and I can come both before His throne because I'm loved by the Father. Exactly. You 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 get settled in that love because that love becomes sort of like a a protection yeah. over your life. And the Bible does say that in uh, Galatians 5, 14, it says something powerful. It says that Galatians 5, verse 14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, in love. It says you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. I mean, we sure. all know the laws that Moses gave the children of Israel, yeah. the do's and the don'ts, yeah. what to wear, what to eat, when, and stuff like that. God is saying here that now if you love your brother as you love yourself, you are actually fulfilling the whole law that was given to the children of oh, Israel. Yeah. And like the one thing I've... I've the one thing I've learned over the few, few the time that I've been now receiving love Christ and really yeah. injecting in it is that love is not about you. Love is not about you. Love is not about you. What are you saying? Because so remember when, when Jesus went to the cross. Yes. Right? If he were, if because Jesus, Jesus loved God, he was his father, mm -hmm. and he know that he was loved by the Father. If he didn't go to the cross, he would love himself more than what he Love wow. us. You understand what wow. I'm saying? Yeah. But Jesus went to the cross selflessly. So that means he loved selflessly. Oh, no wonder he said that. He laid down his life yes. for the sake of his brothers and sisters, which is us. That's yes. like a sacrificial Father love. love. It's not about Father's me. It's not about you. It's not about you. The, when we come to Christ, when we get saved or born again, and we receive the love of Christ, and we accept the love of Christ, mm. It means we have to give out that love now. You cannot hold on to it. Amen. Amen. Because we owe the world. You, owe the, you are robbing yes. someone of receiving love. Wow. If you're holding the love back. You understand know what I'm saying? Amen. So that's why when, when I got that, like, love is not about me. I was like, but God, he said, I, I, I've given you love Amen. to give to Amen. others. Amen. In fact, it says that uh, the way God defines love, he says, this is love. Not that we love him, mm. but that he first loved us and yes. then enabled us now to, to love. go and love the exactly. others. Exactly. That is how powerful love is. And you can actually see the grace of God in operation because he gives us the ability yeah. to be able to walk in love. And that's why he expects us to walk in love because the Bible says he has shed abroad in our hearts yeah. his spirit yeah. and that spirit causes us to love. That's so amazing and that is so powerful. Like in John, in 1 John 4, mm. it says that, Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone who loves is born of God okay. and knows God. And he who does not love does not know God for God is love. That is me. 
So when it comes to the spirit lives inside of us that is the is love. Hmm. So what if you call himself <laughs> that is love? He doesn't have love but uh, he himself is love. He's love. And he said that the same spirit lives that is in Christ is in you. So that means love is inside of you. So you have the ability to, to love. love. Exactly. The love is if you struggling to love your neighbor love is there in your spirit trapped yes you just have to let it out let because god has already poured his spirit inside of you exactly and it says something heavy here it says and everyone who loves is born of god and knows god so that means if i don't walk in love i don't have the revelation it says he who does not love does know who god is So in other words I don't have a revelation of love sure, of God if I cannot walk in love. And the one thing the scripture that speaks about love your neighbor as you love yourself. Amen. The truth is that if you cannot love yourself how can you love someone else? It says they. Exactly because yes. you cannot give someone what you don't, you don't have you understand yeah. what I'm, I'm saying yeah. Yeah. it's so important that we search inside of us and we struggle to love someone and it doesn't matter what the person do where he works what their qualifications is God didn't tell you choose who to love he said love your neighbor as you love yourself it's a command it's a it's command a, it's a command from the he word he didn't of tell God. me you only love Dikama Mapule you only love Joni he said to me love your neighbor as That means you someone yourself. that I see on the street, I owe that person love. In fact, the Bible does say that all oh, men nothing but to love, love them. them. It's sure. so important. Sure, sure. Love is really something that you can drag on for. You can talk about it the whole day. It is, yeah. But without receiving it, hmm. when you encounter the Spirit of God, Amen. You have to receive the love that comes with the encounter. Amen. Amen. For me it's no longer about having the goosebumps. It's not longer about or for me it's about when I encounter God I want to receive the love because when I receive the love I can receive the revelation and I can receive the discipline hallelujah. that comes through love hallelujah. because I know I'm being disciplined through hallelujah. love. Yeah. You understand? Not just oh I have an encounter and then tomorrow I'm miserable because but I didn't encounter yesterday why I was going on today. Amen. Because you ever receive the love that the encounter came with. Amen. So church family this is what God is saying to us this afternoon he is reminding us of the importance yeah. of walking in love we are commanded God says thou shall love your neighbor as you love yourself yeah. just as he himself loved us selflessly and that's the word we had to share with you today and then we hope that you enjoyed the word and Jesus said something also he said this is how the people will know that you are actually mine yeah. by walking in love and yes. and I also like what you said yeah. when you said that love is not about us but it is actually about fulfilling what God is saying Yeah, Do you sure. have one last scripture before we close? Yeah, I have one last uh, Ephesians 5 verse 1. Okay. It speaks that therefore be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. Amen. As an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. Okay. So that that word there <laughs> the fragrance, the fragrance offering The mm. sweet aroma of mm. fragrance. Mm. Mm. Fragrance is also the favor of God. Okay, so when we're walking in love, we are actually like a sweet smelling aroma. Yes, you, know, you are favored, you know, yeah. because you are Amen. you fulfill the command Amen. that God has given you. And God is love. So that is And the Bible says that favor is actually like a shield. It yeah. surrounds us. It builds a hedge around us. So when we walk in love, we have that supernatural that protection. Well, yes over our lives and i believe that there is no enemy weapon that can that can penetrate yes. the power of love sure it's hallelujah amen. amen amen do you want to close for us yeah i just, I just want to leave one one thing today with you guys and love is not being okay with being treated wrong mhm mm love is not you having to give up your dreams because the people that surround you is unhappy with your dreams or your purpose or what God has called you for. Yeah. Love is you going for your dreams. And the people that pause themselves, your supporters, they will support you. Because that, that's what love do. It's exactly. support. Exactly. It's support and it strengthens. Yeah. Love is is not giving up on you. People won't give up on you even when you do fall because we all do fall. And it did say that that love honors. Yes. Exactly. And most importantly, love when 
Love is when they help you when you're wrong. Like I said, when mm-hmm. you're wrong, people will help you. Yes. To come back into line. They will celebrate with you. Amen. In your Amen. victories. Amen. Amen. And they will cry Amen. with you in your disappointments. Exactly. That is what love is. But one thing is that everything else will fail. The Bible says prophecy or in fact, but love will remain. And love will never fail. Yes. Love will always remain. Amen. So this week, walk your week with love. Look at people differently. Exactly. Look at them through Jesus' Amen. eyes. Because when just look Amen. at you, look at you through love. And remember, you owe me love and I, I owe you love. love. <laughs> and thank you for tuning thank in. You guys. And have a lovely day, Feather. May the Lord bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye-bye. Bye.